Good evening. I'm 24 Hour News 8 Steve Kelso. Tonight, we're taking a look back at the first 15 days of Art Prize 2014 conversations and controversy. One piece that sparked public interest, Color Out the Darkness, it's at the Ford Museum, a piece with strong community ties and the talent of a popular Grand Rapids artist. And we are just about to kick off the Talsma concert series. The Carrie Lynch Band is coming up next. And we'll meet some amazing young creative artists that are sure to awe and inspire you. The votes are being counted. The competition is winding down. On Friday, more than a half million dollars will be awarded. But tonight, we use all of the resources of Wood TV 8 and take a look back. This is the best of Art Prize 2014. From Wood TV 8, live from downtown Grand Rapids, this is an Art Prize Finale Week special. Tonight, we begin with Steve Kelso. Good evening. Here we are. The richest art competition in the world is quickly drawing to a close. Tomorrow night at 11.59, the voting will be over. And then on Friday, we'll learn how the $560,000 purse will be divided. You know, for the last three weeks, it's been my privilege to bring you stories of artists, their motivation, their inspiration. And we begin tonight with a look back at some of the best of Art Prize 2014. Not my cup of tea. I just don't perceive that as art. Wow. Of course it all started with controversy, the very stock in trade of Art Prize. It just makes me uncomfortable. Artist Henry Brimmer's installation, There's Something Happening Here, forced us to question security and privacy issues in a post-9-11 world. He managed to do all of this two weeks before competition even began. Frightening, intimidating, offensive. Just a few of the adjectives tossed around. And our prize? Well, they seem thrilled. It doesn't concern you that someone's shocked, does it? No, no. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, all artwork should be offensive, even if it offends offends your sense to, to say, you know, you're caught off guard because something's so beautiful. I'm amazed, but I can't understand. An honest reaction to intersections. It's the only piece that has been embraced by both the public and jurors. It seems to capture the imagination of every person who walks into the Grand Rapids Art Museum. Artist Anelia Kayumaga. I wanted to create a sublime space where everybody is welcome. You know, people can just walk in and it's a spiritual experience and it makes you feel good. You, you speak of it as though the people who come in here and see it are part of the art themselves. They are. Because, you know, I mean, like the, the art piece is no longer just the art, the, the gallery space is the art and the people are immersed in that art. If you let tragedy completely ruin your life, then it's really just tragedy. Jace Morgan is his mother's star's inspiration, but these pictures are as close as you will ever come to meeting him. Last August, 18-month-old Jace died in his sleep. Forced to grieve the most unnatural of losses, his mom discovered a talent she never knew she had. As I was painting just the brush strokes, they were so soothing to me. Her art prize entry is aimed at helping others who have experienced a similar loss. It helps me just see the Jace's legacy being, you know, continued. I lived on the streets for three years, and I was pretty much like a ghost. Drawing from the experience, Giovanna Bagley paints what she knows. She and 14 other artists here at the Heartside Gallery and Studios want to challenge your notion of homelessness. Their efforts were rewarded by the jurors. They have been selected as one of the top five venues. I have no art training whatsoever. Gretchen Lauer does not consider herself an artist. She is a pianist who says she was told to paint. God told me that I was supposed to paint a portrait of a sex trafficking victim. In her first high school art class, Gretchen Lauer earned only a C. Her first large oil, Outcry, now hangs at DeVos Place. And in this, her first art prize entry, she stands to earn $200,000. Now, if you'd like to rewatch this story or any of our art prize stories, you can find them on our website at woodtv.com. 
Discover the top eight things to do each day and every day of Art Prize. We've made it easy to find out what's going on with the Wood TV Art Prize app. Check out Art Prize events while you're downtown or use it to plan ahead for your visit. You'll see new content every day. Just browse through the events. We've included maps to locations, your weather forecast so you can plan ahead, and you can even share your favorite Art Prize photos with Wood TV 8. Rosa Park Circle is totally rocking with all kinds of fun. You can see kids and families are busy here. They're busy creating art. That's what Art Prize is all about. Now, we took the art experience a little to the extreme tonight. And you're saying, why are kids, you know, painting on a couch? Tiffany with Talisman Furniture, why are kids painting on a couch? Well, we say, why not? Uh, your home decor should be an expression of your of your taste and your own, uh, your own personal taste. So we want to see what the kids came up with, with everything out here and it's just been so cool and so much fun to see what they come up with. <laughs> well, it's great because you brought down this white leather couch. It became a canvas for kids. We got out some um, washable Sharpie markers and kids have been busy. I mean, look at the beautiful art. They're signing their names. They're drawing different pictures of some of their favorite things. We've got flowers. We have hearts. We have stars and moons. And then you're going to look at this beautiful collection and say, we can inspire furniture that's this beautiful, right? Yes, that's totally it. Like, like it's all about who you are personally and then expressing yourself through your home decor. And that's what we love at Tosma Furniture is really custom orders and custom designing to make it perfect for you. You know, kids are having so much fun here, but I want to make sure everybody knows we don't want kids to color on their furniture at home. Don't do this at home. <laughs> Let us do this. Let us bring in the furniture to do this. <laughs> All right, so if people are watching tonight and they're saying, you know what, I would love it because my kids love purples, blues, and greens. They can come in and you can help create something that's just like that. Exactly. We can take the colors that you want, that color palette, and then turn it into furniture and accessories and, and different pieces to uh, accentuate your home. Now you've decided that you want to take this a little one one notch up. You've created something that's special just for our prize that you're going to actually donate to charity. Tell me about that. Well, we've taken this same sofa and one of our uh, one of our own who works with us. Uh, she is an artist and is doing this beautiful landscape of the of the Grand Rapids skyline. And we're going to uh, have that here at the concert series on Friday night and show it off to everybody because it is gorgeous. I think it is so beautiful. I love how it looks like the water from the Grand River is running off the front of that couch. And this is painted. It's a one of a kind. Yes, it is a one of a kind painted by our own. It's so cool. Come and check it out. And then you're going to actually auction this off and give that money to charity? Yes. Oh, totally. We're all about giving back. So it's going to be great. <laughs> I think that is so cool. Well, I'm watching these kids today and they are going for it. And I think it just shows that everybody has something inside that they want to express and what a great way to do it through art. Again, a reminder, we're not saying color a couch at home, but when you come down to Rosa Park Circle with Talisman Furniture, you can get a marker and you can color furniture. Yes, you can. Come on down, color the, color the sofa. <laughs> It's so fun. You know, our prize has all kinds of cool things. And we've got kids who are busy as bees. Come and take a look. All right, so, buddy, what are you working on? I'm working on something that Hudson called fancy glass. <laughs> something that is amazing and spectacular. I'm going to walk around back here and see. This is really cool. You're drawing a picture. What is that of? It's a robot with my name on it. What do you think about coloring on a couch? It's crazy. <laughs> It is crazy. It's crazy fun. That's what we're having here at Art Prize. The Art Prize experience for families is crazy fun. It's also a way for you to come down and spend time together exploring Grand Rapids and having a great time. Now, let's head over to my friend Jordan. She's at the Talsma Concert Stage. Jordan. The final 20 is made up of the five pieces in each of the four categories that received the most public votes during the first round of voting. Here's a look at the four artists in the 2D category. Autumn's Passage by Fritz Handevanger at the Amway Grand Plaza Hotel. Also at the Amway Grand, Gabriella by Armin Mersman. Into the Autumn Woods by Sandra Bryant at DeVos Place. Outcry by Gretchen Lauer, also at DeVos Place. And Perspective by Mark Middleton at The Bob.
Stay tuned. Wood TV's live coverage of Art Prize Finale Week will continue after this break. The Talsma Concert Series on Wood TV 8, sponsored by Talsma Furniture. We are standing here at the Talsma Concert Series, and the stage is being heated up by the very talented band, the Carrie Lynch Band, and we have Carrie Lynch standing here with us tonight. The crowd is going crazy here at Rosa Park Circle. Carrie, you have had quite a, whir a whirlwind of a year. Yeah. Tell me what's been going on. Um, we've been playing a ton of shows. We've gotten really, really lucky to get to play some really awesome shows. Um, we're getting ready to record a new album pretty quick here. Um, kind of coming off a really, really busy summer. Um, I entered a song into Art Prize. This, yes. just for this art Tell us about your song in Art Prize. Um, it's a song called Fly, Fly, Fly. Uh, it's a really special song to me, so it was cool to enter that in. Um, but we're about to play. We're going to play that one a little later in the show, so stick around and listen up for that one. All right, so tell us who you've got up here with you. Um, Brian Cobb's back here on the drums. we got Ryder Jones over here on electric guitar. <laughs> Mr. Ryan Limbeck on acoustic. And Chris Brodoff over there on the bass. All right, and where can people find your music? You can find us on iTunes, just search Carrie Lynch or Carrie Lynch Band. And uh, we got CDs here tonight as well, right over there. Awesome. All right. Are you ready to hear some more country music? <laughs> All right. Carrie Lynch Band, take it away. You guys are awesome. I love it.
Here's a look at the final 20 for three-dimensional works. Reciprocity by Mark Sijin at the Grand Rapids Art Museum. Poseidon's Paradise by Dan Heffron at The Bob. Michigan in Motion by Dominic Pangborn at DeVos Place. Engulfed in Glass by Jilly Barnes at the Ford Presidential Museum. And The Pond by Cruzy Crew at the Amway Grand Plaza Hotel. Live coverage of Art Prize Finale Week from downtown Grand Rapids will continue on Wood TV 8. to be creative and you know we have so many creative young people in our community i'd like you to meet this young man his name is eli how old are you buddy 11 years old where do you go to school what grade are you in um i'm in sixth grade and i go to craft meadows middle school well eli is actually one of the youngest donors at helen devos children's hospital and you raise money for the hospital every year what how much do you raise how do you raise the money what do you do well the well i um, did it two years ago. I did it for two years, and so far I raised $7,000. $7,000, and are you using your artistic ability to raise that money? Yes. And what are you making? Christmas ornaments. All right, so here we have a table with some Christmas ornaments in front of it. Show me how you actually make the ornaments that you sell to raise money. What do you do? Um, we're going to do something called alcoholing. So you start with something like a plain glass ornament. Yes. And what we would do, except we have no electricity, is we would spray this um, silver paint into the ornament. Right inside it? Yeah. And then it gives us this look? What? Yeah. But um, while it's wet, we air dry and then spray a droplet of this, and then we repeat. Nice. OK, so now that we have it to this stage, what do we do? Then we take it and say I want to do a green, yellow, like that color. Okay. So so we're going to actually drop some paint right inside this ornament. Where do you sell some of these at? Um, I'm going to sell at Duncan Lake Middle School, that craft show, and um, West Catholic High School. So you are out there working at all holiday season to raise money for Helen DeVos. What made you decide that was the place you wanted to give your money? Um, my grandpa died um, like two, two or three years ago. And he died of um, skin cancer. When I was younger, he had skin cancer. They didn't. Um, he, they thought they got rid of it all, but they missed the cell, and it's traveled through his spine. So then you decided, in honor of your grandpa, you wanted to give it to people who are helping others. Yes. Okay, this is looking really good. So you actually put the paint in there, and you roll it around, and you make a beautiful ornament. Huh? Yeah, it's actually ink. It's ink. It looks great. Take a look at some of the beautiful ornaments that Eli and his mom have made. These are the kinds of things they're selling to raise money for Helen DeVos Children's Hospital. Why do you love using your artistic skills to help others? Because I think it's just the best way to sell or um, and raise money for Helen DeVos. I couldn't really think of any other way to okay. sell. I think it's awesome. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. What a great young man. All right, speaking of great young people, kids are down here doing cool things all the time. And here we are. You're amazing us. What's your name? How old are you? Where are you from? My name is Peter Hofstra. I'm 18. I live over in Decatur, and I'm going to school at uh, KBCC. All right, so your skill is obviously a magician. Magic. How long have you been doing magic? I got my first magic set when I was five from my grandpa, um, and I've been doing it ever since. I got really big into it about uh, three or four years ago, doing shows and whatnot. So now it's pretty much takes up all my time. All right, so you've been amazing crowds down here for the past couple of hours. I want to see you actually just shuffle those cards because I'm impressed. All right, just shuffle these up real quick here. We got. What does it take to be a good magician? Um, a lot of practice, so just like any other skill. Uh, a lot of practice and dedication, um, and there is a little bit of natural talent for everybody. Uh, so if you don't have that, you can only go so far. But um, you know, I'm I got lucky, I guess. So. Show me how you do that thing where you were kind of fanning the cards all the way out. This is pretty cool. Yeah, like that. <laughs> One more time. 
Very cool. Keep up the great work as a magician. You are awesome. Thank you. All right, now if you are looking for ways to inspire your kids, here's something cool you could do this weekend on Saturday. Bring them out to Air Zoo in Portage. We're doing an event called Walk Air Zoo. Our friends from Priority Health will be there as well. You come on out, you register at 9 a.m., and at 9.30, we're going to walk Air Zoo as a family. We'll walk through all of the various areas. You'll see amazing aircraft. You'll see shuttles and cool things. And then, once we're done, we have some refreshments for kids, and you can spend the rest of the day in Air Zoo. It's going to be a total blast. It's $5 a person. You get a t-shirt. You get all kinds of great things. Plus, you can stay and play. So, we would love it if you'd come on out and join us. Now, for a look at the time-based artists in the final 20. Urban Tumbleweed by Nathan Leroux at Cathedral Square. Always Nowhere by Liz Roberts at the Grand Rapids Art Museum. Your Move by Robert Shangle at the Harris Building. Parallax by New D Media at the UICA. And Color Out the Darkness by Carol Rhoda at the Ford Presidential Museum. We'll be right back with more, live from downtown Grand Rapids, after a break. Look at our young artists. They are busy creating on this couch, having all kinds of fun. We'll be right back with more from Art Prize. Hi, I'm Sarah Van Winkle, and I'm a design intern at Art Prize, and this is my Art Prize Insight. This year, I'm excited for the Art Prize Awards Ceremony and Concert that's going to be going on in Rosa Parks Circle. It's on October 10 at 5 p.m. There'll be family fun down there, food, and a celebration with the concert. And this is Bill Steffen. We are live downtown Rosa Parks Circle having a great time this evening. You know what? The full moon is just coming up in the east. No eclipse tonight, but a nice full moon will be shining down this evening as we listen to the music and enjoy the art downtown Grand Rapids. Hundreds of people down here this evening. And after a very windy day today, that wind calming down uh, right now, we're looking at about 10 miles an hour. And the wind will certainly be lighter here over the next couple of days. I want to show you storm track live. There's no rain out there in our area. We've been tracking some showers across northern lower Michigan and eastern upper Michigan. Also some showers well southwest of us, but they're not coming here. We will stay dry here not only for tonight, but probably right on through the rest of this week. Next chance of rain not till about Sunday afternoon. Here's the way it looks over the next four days. Making your plans to come down to Art Prize. About the only chance of rain will be Sunday afternoon. A lot of the yard's still up here over the weekend, so uh, make your plans to come on down one more time. We're looking at temperatures around 59 here for tomorrow and uh, maybe 56 on Saturday, but uh, temperatures a little bit uh, below average for this time of year. Some cool early mornings if you're up early. You might want to uh, grab that jacket because temperatures will be down in the 30s here. Best bet for frost is going to be Saturday morning with temperatures down in the low to mid 30s. Uh, this evening, if you're going to be coming downtown or if you are downtown here outdoors, by around 11 o'clock, our temperature will be down to 48 and skies will be mostly clear. Here's a look at current temperatures. A lot of upper 50s showing up, some low 50s off to the north. The north country may see a little bit of uh, isolated frost come tomorrow morning, but uh, most of us having a better chance of frost Friday or Saturday morning. Winds uh, still a little bit breezy here in Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo. But the wind should be dying off to about 5 to 10 miles an hour everywhere here overnight tonight. Here's what we're tracking for you. First of all, winds will be diminishing. Now, we do have that isolated chance for frost here overnight tonight. That would be mainly in areas north and northeast of Grand Rapids. We are going to be seeing a chance for uh, uh, rather uh, clear skies during the early morning. Should be a nice start to the day as temperatures uh, get up back into the 50s here tomorrow. Uh, we are going to be looking at some rain for um, Sunday night and Monday, and that may start Sunday afternoon. Here's the way tomorrow looks. I think we'll be seeing um, a day like today, only not quite as breezy. Skies will be partly to mostly sunny. It should be a great day to be out and about. Winds will be out of the west at around 10 to 15 miles an hour. And the eight-day forecast looks like this. I think we'll be seeing temperatures only in the mid to upper 50s for the next several days. Uh, look for temperatures in, at night down in the 30s. It will be a little bit warmer the next couple of nights if we're going to be right by Lake Michigan. The wind will be light west off the lake. We warm up in the low 60s early next week, but we bring in that chance of showers, and the best bet for getting rain will be on Monday. Enjoy the next three days. should be fantastic. Now we turn to Jordan up on stage. The Talsma Concert Series on Wood TV 8, sponsored by Talsma Furniture. Welcome back to Rosa Parks Circle for the Talsma Concert Series. And once again, let's give it up for the Carrie Lynch Band. <laughs> Hey guys, this is 
song that um, I entered into Art Prize this year is called Fly, Fly, Fly. I hope that you like it. guys very very much
We continue the Art Prize Finale Week special with Rachel Ruiz. In the world of high-end art, Art Prize is really gaining momentum. I mean, when you have people from New York and L.A. coming to Art Prize, people are taking notice. We're here with John Wolf, and he is an art advisor. So, John, why don't you explain what you do? Sure. Well, as an art advisor, people come to me who are looking to build an art collection, or maybe they want to add a specific piece to their collection, or they've never collected before, and they want to know how to start or where to start. Yeah, okay, so you have a tie to West Michigan. This isn't just by chance. Of course, it's the artwork that you're here for, but there's something a little deeper. Yeah, I was born and raised in Grand Rapids. So I grew up here, I left for college and moved to L.A. right after. And I come back every July for 4th of July and, and have never made it back for Art Prize. Wow. So this is my first year. Yeah, but when people are talking about it in your business, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to high-end art, yeah. is that what brought you back for Art Prize? It is. Like, my mom has always been like, John, you got to come back for Art Prize. And I, I was like, I will, Mom, I will eventually, you know, but I, I finally read an article by a New York um, art critic just kind of explaining kind of why it's such an important event and that it was really on their radar and I'm like okay and, and she made a joke about New York snobby art people actually coming to visit Art Prize and I thought gee I'm kind of like that I'm not snobby but <laughs> I'm, I'm an LA art guy and I really need and to come. And this is home. Yeah All this right. is home. So yeah. let's look at some fabulous art. Okay. So we are here at the Grand Rapids Art Museum, and I asked John to come up with a short list of his own, some of his favorite things here at Art Prize, and this made the list. Yeah, Intersections by Anila Kayum Aga is phenomenal. I think the fact that she took something that was a concept or emotion as a child visiting Alhambra, and then was able to, to create this experience, because it really is. It's not just a sculpture in the middle of a room. The whole room becomes the piece of art. So if I were to sell this, I would require you to build a room this size and install it there. So maybe off the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This would be nice. Perfect. What else made your list, John? Uh, Alex Podesta's self-portrait as bunnies uh, in the Grand River is phenomenal. I think it inspires so many people to think outside of what is traditional art, um, especially children. You know, you walk by that and it just kind of inspires kids to think outside of their framework. Sure. And one at the Women's City Club that really caught your eye. Yes, there was one by Christopher Kovacevic, which was a self-portrait that he made out of lipstick. So he used lipstick uh, on his lips and he kissed the canvas in, I mean, you have to just go see it. I can't even describe it, but self-portrait made out of lipstick. Okay, so how about one more? One more must see here at Prize. Tom Price's sculpture at the Frederick Meyer Gardens is phenomenal. It is, um, it's not very large, it sits on a pedestal and it's made of bronze, which when you think of bronze sculpture, you kind of think of the classic, you know, old school medium, you know, from France in the 1800s, but this piece is very contemporary. So he's taking a, an old process with a contemporary feel. The subject is wearing like a puffy jacket and holding his iPhone. So it, it's this really great experience. So John, you're in the business of always finding fresh new talent, new artists to represent, but you've worked with some really familiar names and you have some cool projects going on yourself. Yeah, Why don't you tell us about sure. it? Sure. Well, I, I've curated some art for some phenomenal collections with for Maria Shriver, John Cryer, and right now I'm planning for um, the mayor of LA's house, which is the Getty House. We're creating an exhibition of art um, to kind of highlight the, the best and brightest of LA. Uh, for this spring, so that's really exciting. But outside of that, I just have I have a lot of private clients and collectors that I'm always looking for kind of the next um, inspiration for their collection, and that's what brought me to Art Prize was to really kind of seek out the undiscovered gems in, in the art world. Yeah, well, we appreciate you spending some time with us. Well, it's my pleasure. Yeah. So we're talking about the impact of Art Prize worldwide here in downtown Grand Rapids. We've been hearing a lot about the Art Prize entry, Color Out the Darkness, this week. It's actually a collaborative effort between the artist, Kale Rhoda, and the Salvation Army. It made the top 20 pick for the public vote. But more than that, I think it connected with people who can relate to those moments of darkness in their own lives. Despite the darkness, there's always light. And I just felt like that quote kind of summed up this 
piece, but also my situation as well. When an artist and an organization come together, amazing things can happen to help color out the darkness. I w worked with 25 children who had cancer, and we created books. We talked about the day you're diagnosed with cancer is a dark day, and then we start coloring together, and we create these beautiful books. Salvation Army heard about that, and they said, well, we think we color out the darkness when we feed the hungry and when we shelter the homeless. We'd like to collaborate with you at Art Price. And then when we saw uh, what Carol was thinking about, what she was trying to develop, what her thoughts were, where she was coming from spiritually, I saw it as an easy fit. And the whole thing is about light and dark, and the light and dark that works through all of us. It's not like some people are in the dark and some people are in the light. We're always shifting to various degrees of that. It really parallels what the Salvation Army and the Christian Church is all about, bringing people uh, from one position in life to another position in life, bringing them out of the dark into the light, bringing color into their life. Ayana George went through a dark period in her life after the birth of her first child, suffering from an illness, being a single mom, and realizing she needed help. I still needed that extra push and extra help, so that's why I reached out to the Salvation Army. Our experiences are all different. We all go through darkness, and we all experience light. Uh, if we're open to learning and humble ourselves through those experiences. The Salvation Army uh, traditionally uh, has reached out to people who are in dark places, offered hope, offered light, in an attempt to bring some color to, to, uh, to their world. It's been wonderful to be out here and hear from people the wonderful experiences that they have had with the Salvation Army. Of course, they're not gonna just make all of your problems go away, but the fact that they are there to help you they are encouraging you to do what you should do, and they are trying to get you where you want to be. You have to work as well, so with your help, they'll help color out the darkness. Our prize offers the opportunity for artistic expression, a unique connection to the community, and in this case, healing as well. Salvation Army helped me color out the darkness by encouraging me and helping me to see that there is always light in any situation. You can see Carol Rhoda's piece at the Ford Museum and there's still time for you to get your vote in and pick your favorite piece. We'll be back with more music. Thank you. Only one work made it in both the jurors list and the public vote. That is in the installation category, Intersections, by Anelia Kayum Aga. At the Grand Rapids Art Museum, she has the chance to win $400,000 if she wins the public vote and the juried vote on Friday. Also on the installation list, despite similarities to reality, this is a work of fiction by Ryan Spencer Reed, also at the Grand Rapids Art Museum. Grand River Fish Petroglyph by Kevin Sedyth at the Grand Rapids Public Museum. Breathe by Dave McKenzie at The Bob, a series of handmade Japanese paper-cut sculptures by Solo and Kojima at the Ford Presidential Museum.